Welcome to Learn Kogus TV episode number three, the first one in 2012. Um, maybe a bit short this time because of the holiday season and there was a lot of catching up to do for me in terms of email and stuff. So um, there's just a few things this, this time. Um, I'll start with updating Cobalt 2D to Cocos 2D 2.0 beta. Um, I did this as sort of a test to see how much work it would be to uh, convert Cobalt 2D to use a new Cocos 2D and it turned out to be fairly straightforward to convert. I managed to convert all the uh, 15 or so um, projects in Cobalt 2D to um, use Cocos 2D 2.0 um, within a matter of two days. The most problems I had with um, were figuring out why Chipmunk Space Manager wouldn't work. It turns out it uh, needs a new shader and um, there's also some other incompatibility. Um, but, uh, well, I hope that it's going to be fixed soon. And the other thing is um, Cocos 3D as it is, is not compatible with Cocos 2D 2.0. And according to their roadmap, um, it won't, there won't be a compatible Cocos 3D version out before uh, the third quarter of 2012. Well, that's if if you believe that the roadmap always is followed strictly, so that's uh, not <laughs> not likely. So hopefully we'll see a, a compatible version of Cocos 3D with Cocos 2D 2.0 sooner, but right now there's no telling. Um, well, one of the more troublesome uh, or more extensive updates were to Box2D and that includes um, adding a new GLS render version that is compatible to um, or compatible with um, Cocos 2D 2.0 respectively OpenGL ES 2.0. Um, you can just copy that out from the um, Cocos 2D 2.0 box to do template turns out um, but you also have to update your draw code. Um, let me show you um, so that's basically the code that you used to write or something like that and the new code is much slimmer and uses new um, functionality in Cocos 2D 2.0. And when you run it, you'll see that it works. So you see it works, it renders the debug information, boxes are, yeah, well, they have their shapes drawn. And that's basically it. Um, one other thing is uh, if you if you're wondering um, why it's so relatively straightforward to update your Cocos 2D 2.0 and that's because um, if you look here um, there's only this many new classes and I believe particle batch node has already been uh, branched to Cocos 2D 1.1 so it's basically just GL state shader cache GL program which is a shader program wrapper and CC vertex um, so basically new classes are only for um, OpenGL ES 2.0 rendering and in terms of API there are only minute changes and um, unless you've been developing for very very early devices and uh, still want to support uh, iOS 3 um, you probably your code is probably um, quite compatible with Cocos City 2.0 already um, which brings me to um, the well, probably most difficult part of upgrading to Cocos 2D and that's the shaders. Um, if you just, let's, let's assume you were updating your existing project and wanted to add um, the shaders to it. You'd select some of those shaders and add them to your resources section. That's probably the normal way that you would do it. And if you build and run you'll see there's quite a bit of warnings here. And if you click on it, uh, the warning says something like no rule to process file blah 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 for architecture blah. Um, that's because if you add those files they are um, to the resource section they are regarded as source code and that means if you check in the build phases um, they are actually added to the compile sources build phase and that's not what you want. You want to um, remove them here and add them back in to the copy bundle resources section. That's where they belong. Now I, f I found this task a bit troublesome, bit, bit uh, well it's just 
it sucks to have to do this with every new shader that you add to the uh, project. Um, so for Cobalt 2D um, 2.0, um, I decided to use a folder reference, that's the blue folder here. Um, that means um, everything you change, every file you add or remove or rename in that folder um, called shaders um, is going to be um, automatically loaded by Xcode and uh, updated. Um, the downside here is that um, these paths are maintained in the bundle, so they are not in the main path of your bundle, but um, you'll have actually you actually have uh, subfolders slash shaders slash cocos 2 d um, and for that reason I had to update the GL program loading code, um, which you can see here. It um, first checks if the shader could be found and if it didn't wasn't found it checks in the shaders directory and if that fails it checks in the shaders cocos 2d directory which in case of cocos uh, uh, cobalt 2d um, contains all the internally used uh, shaders um, from coco uh, from cocos 2d yeah well of course by going through the process i um, realized i learned a bit a lot of um, the details about converting cocos 2d so um, i wrote this down and made a blog post about it and I um, also added a little, well, decision-making process helper uh, table chart thingy. Um, in essence, you normally you would say that um, a higher version infers that uh, the version of that library is better or has more features, etc., etc. But in case of Cocos 2D, um, and particularly at, at the moment, it's uh, just the difference or the, the decision between um, being compatible with all devices, but not being able to write shader programs, in that case use version 1.x, or if you want to use uh, OpenGL ES shaders and can live with the fact that you can't deploy to first and second generation devices anymore, and you have uh, you can't use the Chipmunk Space Manager and Cocos 3 libraries, then you can use uh, Cocos 2.0. Um, I also um, write a bit, wrote a bit more about uh, the upgrade process and you'll find all the details here, nasty things, I don't need to repeat this. The only thing that's rather important is that um, if you upgrade your project and also if you start a new OpenGL uh, Cocos 2D 2.0 project, um, you have to open your info plist file and change the UI device required capabilities from OpenGL ES1 to OpenGL ES2. Otherwise, um, Apple might reject your app because, um, uh, well, it would indicate to iTunes that it would still be compatible with um, OpenGL ES1 devices, and that's certainly not true for Cocos 2D 2.0. Um, so, do we have anything else? Of course, yes, of course. Um, I also decided that um, for all the projects I make for write for um, IDF blog of day posts um, articles um, blah 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 well <laughs> I decided to upload the code to github da 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 so here it is um, um, those are separate projects and I also added a, a workspace in case you um, want to open them all at once and go through them one by one or just see what the projects are there. I find it quite convenient to have a workspace and um, you'll get additional uh, uh, information about each project and the link back to the article and the version, um, Cook Studi version that was used for that project um, as well. Anyhow, um, I think I'm at the end of this uh, part and just say goodbye here, right? Okay, see you next time.